to go out for, um, to meet someone for drinks. And you know, I haven't filmed a beauty video in a while and I thought it was time. So I just went old school. I went back to my Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette for this look. I wanted something warm. I was gonna be wearing a pink V-neck sweater. And so I thought, you know what? Let's go back to the Chocolate Bar palette. Let's do something warm and complimentary with a fairly nude lip. It's still winter time. So I went with a lip that was neutral but dark. And yeah, this is the look that I came up with. If you guys are interested in seeing this look and listening to me ramble on about lots of different things, then be sure and keep on watching. Let's get started. Okay guys, I already have color corrected. Well, I moisturized. I used my smoothie primer from um, Fab, First Aid Beauty, um, the coconut smoothie primer. I used that and then I went in with my Urban Decay um, green and then I also went in a little bit with the infallible palette that I have. I've done a video on that on my channel. I just did like a full look um, using L'Oreal and I think I used it in that but I've used it before but I just went ahead. I had a red spot. It's a scar right here and so I dabbed a little bit of the green on that and then my age spot I just dabbed a little bit of the purple on there just to try and kind of help camouflage it just a little bit more. Um, and then I went in with my um, L'Oreal Pro Glow, Infallible Pro Glow in the color 203, which is nude beige. So I have done all of that and I'm ready to work on my eyes. Now, um, I'm gonna go old school today. I'm going into my chocolate bar palette. So I'm gonna use that. Before I do, I need to go in with my NARS eyeshadow primer. So I'm just gonna kind of put some of that on my lid and rub it in and this stuff, you know, as with any other thing, it does get tacky after a few minutes once it starts drying and you're rubbing it in. Once it gets tacky is when you know that it's ready. And yeah, so I'm real excited to be going back into an oldie but goodie. I haven't used my chocolate bar palette in a really long time. And I haven't um, really decided what I wanna do. I think I wanna go with something a little neutral. I'm wearing a purple sweater, or not a purple, but a pink sweater today. And um, my frizzies are just totally out of control, but I'll get that under control when I go to fix my hair. Um, it's in a bun from washing it right now, and I slept in it last night, so that makes it frizzy. <laughs> but I'll get that under control soon. So I'm gonna go in to start with, with this fluffy um, shader brush. It's an E14, but it's a nice fluffier brush, and I really like it for an all over color. I'm gonna go in with the, um, right here, the white chocolate. I'm gonna go in with that, and I'm gonna put that all over the lid and just set down that primer my mirror is right here, so you'll see me looking that direction. But yeah, I just have on my rub, fresh out of the shower. I'm getting ready um, for dinner and drinks <laughs> with someone new. Um, this will be the first time for me to meet this person, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I know in one of my um, videos, I talked to you guys about guy A and guy B or whatever. Kick that idea to the curb, both of them. Just kicked it to the curb. I give up. Um, I give up pretty much on both of them. The one that was kind of, you know, uh, not doing right, I just, I mean, totally wrote that off. I just, that's just, it got to the point where, you know, it was obvious that it needed to be done. And so I did. And so I feel much better about it, actually. I feel really good about the situation. Um, the other guy, I mean, that I mentioned that I, you know, I, I've known him for a very long time and everything. His life is just not such right now that he is um, going to be able to date and or see anybody or um, devote any time to anything. He's just got so much on his plate with his family situation. And 
Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I'm just not getting the impression that he's even interested anymore. So, um, you know, I'm okay with that because, you know, life has got to go on. <laughs> it's got to go on. And so, um, I've just kind of continued to put myself out there. I had said, forget it. I'm not worried about it anymore. I'm not going to deal with it anymore. And, um, out of the blue, I, I just met this person online and, um, we got to talking. We have a tremendous amount in common. Um, and we're meeting for drinks this afternoon and probably dinner afterwards. And so we're just gonna, um, get to know each other and we'll see how it goes. If, um, nothing comes from it, it's okay. I don't have to, you know, I mean, I, I'm not in a hurry. I don't feel pressure. I'm just wanting to be me and enjoy time with another adult, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, there's that. Now, before I go any further, I think what I need to do... Well, yeah, I think I'm just, no, I'm just going to wait. Okay, so I'm going to kind of um, just, you know, that's set down now. So I think what I'm going to do is decide where I want to go with this look. Um, I'm going to use, I want to go warm. So I'm going to use what's called salted caramel, this one right here. I'm going to use that as my transition color. Yeah, I think that's where I want to go with this look. I was thinking for a second. I thought, mm, no, I, I'm going to stick to this palette. So I'm going to go in with the salted caramel. It's a wonderful crease shade. Um, it's got a lot of bang for the buck. You know, I mean, I love Too Faced. Their um, chocolate bar palettes are so pigmented and so easy to blend. And there's a lot of color payoff. And I really like that. So um, yeah, since my robe is pink, it'll give me kind of an idea of what the look I'm going for, sorta. It's, this is a light pink, um, so it'll give me a little bit of an idea, um, about how this look is gonna go with what I'm wearing. I don't want anything that's gonna be like a huge contrast, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is, um, gosh, I don't even know what the date is. It's, um, Sunday. And, um, yeah, so we're just going to um, meet this evening, and I'm getting ready for that. And I also have some other videos I'd like to um, film today before time for that. So I thought I'd go ahead and get ready early and um, film a couple of other videos while my face is done and I look decent. <laughs> um, I love this salted caramel for the crease. It's just such a wonderful mid-tone brown, um, just a medium brown. It's got a touch of um, warmth to it. So um, I definitely wanted to go warm with this look today. So I think this will be good. I'm just really blowing it out. You guys know that I have hooded lids. So I always go above the actual crease, but I'm blowing it out a whole lot because I want it to show after you know I get through with my outer corner and my lid. And I'll go back in, you know, and reinforce it if needed. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. I like to do windshield wiper motions, but I usually do little circles as I'm going through that motion. So that's the way that I do things. And this still smells so good. Oh gosh, it just still smells so good. I just love it. Okay, let's go in with, um, I think what I want to do, I think I want to, um, Let's see, what do I want to do? There's so many choices in this palette, and I love them all. But I think I'm going to go in with this. Um, I like this little stubby brush. It's an E18. I like this little stubby brush, and the reason I like it is because I can control the color so much. And when I'm going into a palette like this, I want to be able to control the color because it's so strong. I'm going to go into, I'm really going for a glowy look. So I'm trying to decide between... Um, semi-sweet, which is a matte, and amaretto here, which is another warm shade, but it's a satin. So, I think I'm going to go in with um, semi-sweet, the, the matte, and maybe use the amaretto along the lash line, and that'll give me some warmth. So, I'm just going to go on that outer V. I always like to start along my lash line right there, and then I work it up into my crease just a little bit, and that gives me a really nice defined outer corner. It lifts my eye because 
if you come down with colors, it will make your eyes look a little droopy, and you don't want that. We all want our eyes to, not really a cat eye, you know, because I'm not doing um, a liner, but it gives the illusion that your, you know, your eyes are not drooping um, when you do this outer corner in a nice V. You can see that um, it's beginning to take shape. I just do a little bit at a time. There's no need to rush. If you put too much on there, you can't get rid of it. So I like to just build up and um, you can see um, that it's beginning to do that. And I like the way that it deepens up that out, outer V. It looks really nice. Um, of course, I'll clean up with concealer, you know, this line here. But overall, I really like these colors together. I'm glad I went with that one. And then I can just, um, when I go to do liner and that sort of thing, I can use the satin amaretto and enhance it, especially on the bottom lash line. But yeah, that's what I like to do. So let me get this side done. I just like the look of, you know, using your outer V to lift the corner of your eye. I really like that a lot. I think it's very complimentary of any eye shape. Um, you just don't want your eyes to look downturned. And, you know, if they look sad and droopy, especially if you have hooded eyes like me, um, it makes you look tired and um, it makes you look like you need more of a facelift than you really need. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. This guy seems super nice. Um, meeting in, on neutral grounds, which is good. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. I will try to vlog at some point and catch you guys up on that. So if you're not already subscribed to my second channel, there's a link down below in the info bar. You can go there and click um, to go to my vlog channel. Um, it's called Around the Corner <laughs> with a K. And um, that's where I do life updates and that sort of thing. You know, just general talking, you know, that sort of thing. The more personal stuff and not the planning and beauty things that you know like this or a planner video so yeah okay I really like the depth that this has given me I'm not quite sure if I've gotten as much on this side as I did the other let me go in just, just a little bit more so um one thing I do want to tell you guys if you are one of my planner people and you watch my beauty videos too um I am um, on the PR team for Sassy Apple Studio again, and I'm also still on the PR team for Jelly Beans. So, um, I do have a coupon code down below, so don't forget to use that. If they're ever not having a sale, you can use my coupon code to save money. Um, I don't get any kickbacks or royalties or commission. I don't make anything off that. Those are just, um, bonus coupon bonus coupon codes that you guys can use to save money in those shops. Now, Sassy Apple Studio, she has amazing stickers and die cuts. And uh, Jolie Beans, she has, Katrina has like great clips and, um, you know, like the felt uh, clips. And she also has all kinds of um, dangles and other kinds of things that you would um, use for your TN. She has the um, elastics where you can restring them if you want to. She has so many different items um, available in her shop. So check my coupon codes down below and use those. Um, there's two Kellys on the um, PR team for uh, Sassy Apple Studio. And my name is spelled with an I, and her name, the other girl's name is spelled with a Y. So if you want my exclusive freebie when you're ordering, make sure you spell my name right um, and use my keeping code, because that way, um, you know, you'll get the one that I chose. And I chose um, a freebie that I feel like is, um, it, that it, I got to design mine, and so I chose stickers that I felt like you guys would really like that are very functional and you would enjoy using. So there's that. Okay, now that I have done that, I know it looks messy right now, but it's going to get cleaned up. Let me go back in and just kind of, with my original brush, that Sigma E40 that I always use, and let me just kind of blend just a little bit in case there's a line, because we don't want lines. That's never a good thing. It smells so good. I can't have chocolate, so this smells really good. <laughs> Let me 
put that over there and let me put the other one over here too because uh, I've got so many brushes in front of me that it's hard for me to remember which ones I've used. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this one. It is a concealer brush actually, but it's a F as in face 70 from Sigma. It's just a flat pointed brush. I like to use this one on my lid because I can control everything really well. I'm gonna go into this color called um, Creme Brulee. It's um, kind of a pinky mauve color. I'm gonna put that on my lid. And I may get a, a good bit of fallout from this, but um, that's okay. I just want to get along the lash line and then go just a little above my actual crease so that you can see it when I'm looking up at you and not just when I look down. So I'm putting this on. It's a very good um, frosty color which lightens the lid up, kind of opens the eye up just a bit. And I'm just trying to marry these two colors, the outer V color and this inner corner look here or this lid color um, so that they look nice and blended. I'm just trying to marry those together a good bit. Um, I am going to have to go in and reinforce my outer V color just a little bit. This um, is not creme brulee, by the way. This is marzipan. I looked at the wrong name. These names are on the top instead of the bottom of the shade. So this is marzipan. And it is a really pretty mauvey pink. It's a frost and it's just, it's not a glitter. There's no glitter in it at all. It's just a very, very smooth, pretty color. And um, yeah, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, it's a really pretty color and I think it'll be, it'll open my eyes up nice and bright and um, it'll bring just a hint of pink to the look so that my look won't be too um, too much for the color that I plan to wear. I mean, I, I'm not wearing a pattern. I tend to stick more with, I mean, I, I wear patterns, but I prefer solids because I can pretty much do anything that I want um, with my makeup and usually make it work, you know? If I'm wearing a pattern of any sort, I just go very neutral and simple with my look. So that's just me, but that's what I do. So let me go ahead and go back in with a little bit of the semi-sweet that I put in the outer corner. And I'm just gonna kind of um, meet up with that marzipan and kind of make sure that you can see both. I'm just barely, barely dipping in. Just enough so that, you know, it, does, it doesn't get lost in translation there. Um, it's pretty common when you're, you know, when you're working with your eyes to have to go back and blend and that sort of thing. So I'm going to take my original brush. I'm going to go back into the salted caramel just a touch just to reinforce that warmth that I had through my crease area. I mean, I'm just barely touching. These colors are so pigmented um, in the chocolate bar palette. If you don't have a chocolate bar palette, um, I really do think you'd like it. Um, I really love my semi-sweet chocolate bar palette too. Um, it's just one of those things where um, I have both of them because I love them both, but they're very different palettes. But the, it's the same quality, same, you know, same basic thing. You just, it's different colors. Still smells like chocolate. Um, and all of that good stuff. But do you see now how I went in and I warmed that back up just a little bit? That, um, that's gonna be good. Let me go ahead and use my powder brush to catch any fallout that might be falling. I am going to clean up with my concealer, but I like to go ahead and catch anything that might be loose or underneath the eye ever so often just because it makes it easier to deal with. Okay, so that is what I'm looking at so far. Now I'm gonna go in with this angled um, shading brush. It's an E70. I'm, <laughs> I taste chocolate. I mean, it does have chocolate powder in it or cocoa powder in it and brushing my face, it got into my mouth and made everything sweet. Okay, um, so yeah, this is an E70. Oh, and my nails. Guys, I bought Kathleen Lights every year for her birthday. She comes out with, you know, her saying, she always says, that's expensive. 
Well, this is this year's That's Expensive. I purchased this. I thought it was gorgeous. Last year's was much more, I would say that it's glittery, but it has like, it, it's more opaque. This one is like a glitter topper. And last year's was gold, and this one is a rose gold. And I put it over OPI's, um, I put it over OPI's Pinking of You. So this is the color that I put it over. And this is what I ended up with. I think it looks really nice. My nails are beginning to grow just a little bit. And so I wanted to make sure that I got them done before I, um, did my planner video because that's all you see of me is my hands and I wanted to get them done but I think it turned out really pretty I love 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 the um the sparkle that it gives it's a beautiful top coat it was eight dollars or nine dollars something like that it came so fast but it's the um Dice expensive 26 I believe is uh, or 25 I can't remember I think it's 26 anyway um it's the Roman numerals and I never remember those once you get past the 20 uh, I can't remember. I'm, I'm getting old, guys. So now what I want to do is I'm going to use this shader brush, and I need to go into my brow bone and do a little something. I'm going to use this one. It's called Champagne Truffle. It's pretty bright, so I'm going to be very gentle with the color. Um, I'm just going to get a tiny little bit, and I'm going to tap it off really good. I'm just going to lightly go in on my brow bone. And start blending this in. I like using this uh, angled shader for this because it helps blend. Not It doesn't just lay down the color on the brow bone, but it also helps blend in that line from my crease color. So, in my transition. So, um, I like that, you know, as I'm laying down this color, it's also blending out so there's no, there's no line there. And because this is a pink color, it's a very light pink color. Um, you just don't want to overdo it. You want to be very gentle with this color and, you know, just blend, blend, blend so that you don't have, you know, you don't want your brow bones to just jump out at people and that, I mean, they'll just look at you like you're, you know, shine from space um, on your brow bone, especially if you have issues with your brows like I do, being sparse and that sort of thing. Um, you want to highlight them to bring that, I mean, because they're a high point on your face, but you don't want them beaming and showing off, you know, your sparse um, brows. So, yeah. And I keep breathing this. It tastes so sweet. You don't realize how much you breathe it in when you're working unless it's scented or, you know, anything like that. So, I'm going to go with that. Now then. What I'm going to do next, let me put this to the side along with the brushes that I've used. I'll come in with an inner corner highlight and those kinds of things next. Let me do this. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go do my brows. And after I get my brows done, I'll be back and we'll work on the face. Okay, now that I have my brows on, and they're a little red because I cleaned up around them, but that'll go away. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Tarte Shape Tape. I don't need a lot. I'm going to use my Laura Mercier to, um, in fact, I need to pat it on the bottom and get some out. Last time I used it, I used, the, I used it up. So, I'm going to open that up so that I'll have that ready. Now I'm gonna use that for under my eyes. So let me go ahead and start cleaning up my under eyes, work on my face. I usually um, always do my brows last, but lately I have been um, going ahead and getting them done and just working around them because um, it, I don't know, it just seems easier. It just, it's been kind of um, weird that I've changed the way that I do things like that, but um, I did come down into a point just a little bit. I just don't put that much on my face because of the lines and wrinkles that I have. There's no need in putting too much product. The more product you put, the more cakey bakey. And if you have any fine lines or wrinkles, it's just going to make it show more. I did come down the side of my nose. I did come down the center of my nose just to highlight and in between my eyebrows to highlight. And it really cleans up this area here where, you know, I had a shadow that was kind of out of control, which is good. 
If you have too much shadow and it's out of control, then my beauty blender is also getting kind of dry too. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've just, I wanted to highlight just a little bit down the center of my face, like that right there. Now I'm gonna go into my Laura Mercier and I'm just gonna get some of this powder now. This powder is, um, I'm not gonna bake, I'm gonna actually just tap it in because I want it set. Wherever I put concealer, I'm just gonna tap with this and then I'll use a um, pressed powder for everything else, so. And this will set everything real nicely. It won't move. And, you know, you don't have to, if you use a finishing spray, you don't have to worry about it looking cakey or anything like that, too. That always helps as well. Let me get just a little bit more from my chin where I put that. Just like that, and it's that easy. And you see how nicely, um, I didn't even color correct under my eyes today, so, uh, but you see how nicely that, that brightened everything up. And I mean, I didn't color correct under my eyes, it just was, it just totally slipped my mind. It, it's not because, you know, I didn't intend to, I just totally forgot, so. Okay, let me put that away and get that out of my um, sight. So, now let's work on the face. Um, let me get my, um, Rimmel Stay Matte, and I'm just going to use my powder brush, and I'm going to go all over my face and set everything. I was going to use my Laura Mercier highlight just today, but since I have a good bit going on, my um, that's my washer stopping. If you guys hear it, if you hear a clicking and a beep, that was that was my washer letting me know that it's done. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to um, use this. I have enough. And by the time I finish, I'll have enough um, shimmer on my eyes from the satin that I've used, um, the satin shadows I've used, that I feel like that that's more than enough and, you know, to give me a glowy look and that sort of thing. And, I mean, you know, the foundation itself is not a matte foundation. It has great coverage. Um, I do use um, two layers of it, especially on the areas where I color correct and I mean, let's face it, that's the majority of my face, but um, I think that I look pretty bright eyed. Um, using the brighter colors, especially on your brow bone and your lid, it helps to bring things out. And when I go to put on uh, my liner and I kind of smoke out that bottom lash line and I do an inner corner highlight, it's gonna make all the world of a difference. Okay, now then. I want to go in with my, for my um, bronzer today, and I'm not really gonna contour, I'm just gonna bronze up, but I'm gonna use my Wet n Wild Color Icon. This one is in the color 740 Bikini Contest. I've used the heck out of this thing, and you can still see the, you know, the um, texture of the sunburst and the logo. I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> this stuff has lasted me forever. So I think today what I'm gonna do to do this, I'm gonna use this Real Techniques brush. It is by, uh, yeah, it's Real Techniques, but it is a um, contour brush is what it says. It's just this gold handle one or whatever. I don't normally use this for that, but I've seen a lot of people lately using it and um, it's real good for um, getting it right where you want it. So I'm just gonna use this, oh yeah, gets it right where you want it. And you can see, I mean, this is, no joke, guys. I mean, it really, you know, I tapped off a lot, but you can see that this is a great brush to put it exactly where you want it. And you do want to, you know, kind of line up the top of your ear at an angle here towards the corner of your mouth. That's where you want it to go um, when you're placing a contour or a bronzer. And, you know, a lot of people say you can't contour with a bronzer. Well, I disagree. Look at the difference in my face. This looks like I have a cheekbone and this, you, it's hidden. You can't really see it. So I disagree. I think that you can, you know, you don't have to use both a contour and a bronzer if you don't want to. Makeup is, I mean, it's about your taste. And if you just decide one day that you don't want a contour, that you want to just bronze up and go with that and skip a step, you can do that. You don't have to do the con, the heavy contour and a bronzer and a blush and a highlighter. You can skip it. And I do that quite a bit, but I really like using this. It's very precise and I can kind of blend it out 
and it really does, but you can see the difference when I look ahead. You can see the difference in this side and that side. It really helps carve out that cheekbone, and it helps that, you know, uh, the apple of my cheek, it helps it, you know, really stand out and um, show. So I'm just going in a straight line from the top of my ear to my corner of my mouth, but you just don't want to come down too far. You want to stop, you know, pretty short. You don't want to um, come down to your corner of your mouth because then it's going to, you're going to look like a, um, like a, you know, a ventriloquist dummy. So <laughs> you don't want to do that. I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well draw the lines here and here and really make yourself look like a, uh, you know, a ventriloquist dummy. So yeah, you just don't want to do too much, but I can see why pe a lot of people use this brush. It's very precise. It's very nice. I do have one of the NARS Eda brushes. It's the small one and not the full size, but, and I've used it before, but I just don't care for that. It just doesn't, um, the line is just a straight line, and I find that once you get the product on, it's really hard to get it to blend out. And so, I like a brush that I can use, and, and this was kind of a gamble since I'm trying to get ready to go somewhere and do some filming. So, it's one of those situations where, um, you know, I was kind of taking a risk, <laughs> but um, I really do like the results. I think this is a good brush, and I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to blend it out so that it's not such a stark see there now let me go in with just a little bit and I'm gonna kind of work on my hairline just a little bit just to warm things up not to contour but just strictly for bronzer right now and I'm barely barely touching my skin with the brush I mean I'm just you know and I'm trying to bring it down just a little bit I want bronzer helmet <laughs> that sort of thing I am gonna go right here and on my jawline just to cut this off just a little bit because um, since I've lost weight and those of you that are maybe new to my channel you may not know but um, almost a year ago March 1st will be a year ago I had gastric bypass and I've lost over a hundred pounds and I'm very pleased with that and you know the only thing that I can say is that it is you know um, my face was very very plump so my you know jawline has dropped just a little bit and so i like to fix that by just kind of cutting it off a little bit right here causing a shadow and by causing that shadow it slims up that jawline because it just tends to sag a little bit more now that you know there's not all that fat in my face filling me out and um i've also noticed that you know my um my wrinkles show more but i'm okay with that too because Honestly, um, I can camouflage them in such a way, and especially using, you know, like I, those of you that don't know, I use the Kills toner. I'll be using that in just a little while um, to dab under my eyes to take care of any dryness and, I, and, and a finishing spray. And using those makes a huge difference. So that way you don't have the cakey um, look that, um, Someone my age that's going to be 49 this year, I mean, I do have wrinkles, and um, I'm not plumped up anymore, so there's that. Now, let me go ahead. I'm going to just put on the Burt's Bees Coconut and Pear. My lips are really dry, and I'm going to be using a Kat Von D lip today. So, I want to really moisturize my um, lips really good. And let that just be working on my lips while I'm finishing up my face because they're dry and I don't want to put a really drying liquid lipstick on top of my lips and it flake off and crumble and that sort of thing. So, done that. Now, I'm ready for my blush. Now, for blush today, I'm going to go ahead. I've had this out and I've been using it. I really love it. It's the Makeup Geek Covet. Um, it came in like a boxy charm or something. But it's just a really, um, I mean, really, uh, <laughs> it's a... Um, it's just a really pretty blush. Um, I think it's appropriate for this time of year. It's very, very, very pigmented. So you have to go in with a really light hand. And what I do is I put it on the apple of my cheek and then I bring it back so that it's sort of like a teardrop shape, if that makes sense. But that's what I do with my blush. I, you know, of course I am above the line of bronzer and I'm blending it into and right above it. So 
it just gives it that teardrop shape. So I go around and around here and then I bring it back. And that's what I like to do. I think that that's the most attractive thing rather than just having like a round thing of blush right there on the apple of your cheek. I think that it's, it looks nicer when you bring it back and you kind of blend it into the bronzer a bit. Um, and like I said, this is very pigmented. It looks like I am putting a tremendous amount on in the camera, um, in the viewfinder, but I can promise you it's not near as strong as it, in person as it looks. I mean, I, you know, looking in the mirror, um, in my vanity mirror, it's not as strong as it's coming across, but I am going to blend, so that'll be fine. It, it's gonna be fine. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna take my powder brush, and I just like to kind of go over it, and I just kind of do small little circles and work back. And it gets everything kind of in the same direction. It keeps you from having like a pink line and a brown line. <laughs> it kind of just brings it all together and that way you don't have any sharp lines on your face or anything like that. Before I do my highlight, I do want to work on my lower lash line and I want to work on um, my um, inner corner highlight So uh, and my mascara and all that. So I'm going to be using MAC, the Costa Riche, which is a really warm brown. Let me see if I can find my mirror. Yep, here's my mirror. I was wondering what happened to my mirror, but I'm gonna use my mirror. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tight line, and then on the bottom, I'm gonna go into the lashes and not, I'm not gonna do a water line because it gets all in my eyes and it's yucky. So I'm just gonna do it that way. So let me tight line with this on the top. And if you're not sure what tight line means, that just means that I am putting it on the upper water line. That's what tight lining is. And um, some people are real funny and they don't want to do this because it does involve kind of touching your eyeball and it bothers some people and it kind of freaks them out. It makes my eye water just a little bit, as you can see, but that goes away really fast and I don't usually have any problems with it. So I'm just going to do this. But yeah, it makes my eyes water for just a second just because, you know, you're messing with your eye. You're messing with your eye, you know, you're gonna have, you're gonna have it happen, you know, it's just, it's just gonna make your eyes water. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the lash line on the bottom lashes, and then I'm gonna smoke it out with a pencil brush and that color in the palette that I mentioned earlier. So let me go ahead and go into the lashes. I wanna make sure that my, <laughs> that it's not in the way. Now what I'm gonna do, if I can find the right brush, I'm gonna go into this color that I told you about earlier, this Amaretto. It's just, a, as you, can you see the light hitting it? This one right here. It is a really warm brown. It's like pretty much the shadow version of the MAC Custer Riche. So let me find a good pencil brush to use. I'm gonna use this one that is a Morphe E24. It's a really nice point. It's actually large, but it's really good for going in because it's got a nice sharp point on it for going in and smoking out a lash line. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me go ahead and put that down and I'm going to use my handheld mirror so I can kind of watch. If I start getting any of it in my eye, I can correct it as I go. And also, one great thing about the whole situation here is that it sets it down. You don't have to worry about it moving, which is great for me anyway. All right, that's smoked out pretty good, but it's not too low. And one thing that you might wanna do that is a good trick, if you have underneath your eye, which I do, if you have a crease, you know, like a wrinkle or a crease that is right very close to 
your lash line and you want to hide that if you want to camouflage it, you can bring, when you smoke out this lower lash line, you can bring it down a little further, totally camouflages it and nobody would ever know there's a crease there. So that's just a little, you know, trick that if you have a problem with a crease there, and I do, so it works for me to go ahead and come low enough that I cover that wrinkle and you'll you, I mean you just you can't see it okay so let me go ahead and dust off where some of the shadow fell that I was using there because I do have a few little black and brown or I should say just brown um, specks you want to get rid of that because when I go to set my face if I have any pigment pigmented anything on my face it's just gonna like wet it it's gonna be stuck there and it's gonna bleed and show so yeah just want to constantly go back and you know kind of check for fallout and that sort of thing it's just you know best to do it that way now then let me go in with this this is just a crown brush it's a c51 but it's just a really nice pointed brush i like to use this for my inner corner and I think what I'm gonna do is use the same color that I used for my inner corner that I used for um, my brow bone, which is Champagne Truffle. It's just that frosty pink color. I just wanna go into the inner corner. Um, I'm just gonna kinda dab into the inner corner a little bit and kinda go around it. If you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kinda bringing a little bit, oh, there's a piece of fuzz in my lashes. Okay. Can you see the difference? It brings such life and light to the eye when you put an inner corner there. Um, sometimes I forget it and I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, oh, I forgot my inner corner. And I like having the inner corner there because that light in the inner corner. And the reason I do is because it opens my eyes up and with hooded lids, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> So I just prefer to have an inner corner highlight, but I usually forget it and I'm remembering it today. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> so you can see now um, that it has done a good job of brightening up my eyes. And um, yeah, so I think that it all looks pretty dang good. I'm going to stop there with the eyes now um, as far as shadows and liner is concerned. Now what I want to do is go ahead and go in with my um, highlighter. I'm just going to use my Champagne Pop from Becca that I always use. Um, let me um, see. What do I want to use? I think I'm just going to use this Real Techniques. It says a setting brush, but I think it's really good. It's got a little bit of a point to it, and it's small, so I like to use it for my highlight, and you can see, oh goodness, I am putting a dent in this, but I saw somebody the other day, and they said, whoever really goes through a highlighter anyway? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I like to glow. So I just like to go in right above, but I stay out of this eye socket area. I don't want to bring attention to that. So I stay off of that. And I'm a little bit sort of like overlapping the blush area just a little bit. And I like to bring it into a C so that I'm highlighting the top of my you know, like where the point of your brow would be. Now, my brows are more rounded, but I still have, I still know where the point would be. So, I kind of want to highlight that area and then um, just come on around. And I, I don't just do this way. I mean, you know, I kind of pat at it and because I want it to blend and I want it to look natural. So, that's what I do. Just really gentle. There's no need to go in hard with this. You can add to it if you want more. But you can see what a beautiful glow that that is giving already. See what pretty glow that is? It just makes you look healthy and alive. <laughs> um, it's hard when you're pasty to look alive, no matter what kind of makeup you've got. See there, isn't that beautiful? I just love highlights so much. And it just, I mean, it just, it is what it says, you know, it highlights the features of your face and you want to put it on the high points. So I'm also going to go down my nose and I want to do it on my upper lip right there in the cupid's bow. And I do like to do the, um, you know, the little lines from your um, nose. I like to do those. It just gives you that extra pout.
And a lot of people don't like it on the nose, but I do. I think it, you know, just a little bit of sh glow and shine there. I think it makes you look healthy. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna set my face before I do my um, lashes because I just prefer to do it that way. Um, because my lashes, especially my lower lashes are so long, they tend to touch my face. And if I wet my face and there's mascara on there, then I've got a mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, um, let's see what I want to, that's the primer spray. I used to pull off my Urban Decay all nighter, so I'm just gonna go in with my Scandinavia um, that I always use. Um, the last time I did this I, on camera, I used my MAC Prep and Palm, and I tried to use my Pixi uh, Mist, but it was all jacked up, so I've got to wait till I have an empty container to fit that in that will spray, but you have to shake this. A little bit and then I'm gonna spray and I do put a little bit more than what you really have to but I do that because honestly I want it to just marry everything together and kind of melt it into my skin and I want Anything that is a fine line or a wrinkle or anything like that, I want it to just blend and seem more seamless. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my Beauty Blender, the point of it, and I use this Kills Ultra Facial Toner. This has um, squalene in it, which is a product they actually get from, I think it comes from a whale. I think I saw that somewhere. But, um, yeah, weird. But um, the squalene in it, what it does is when I put this, on there, I'm gonna tap it under my eyes and it takes away any cakiness that's there. I just put a few drops on there, kind of rub it in as I'm getting it on there. I just gonna kind of blend it in. I got some of it on my mirror down there. Okay, and I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap the under part of my eye where I baked. Don't rub or you'll take your makeup off. I like to tap that area because it takes away any of the cakiness and your fine lines. What it does is it kind of almost moisturizes that area and it takes down any cake bake and you absolutely look more flawless with it. I got that tip from Wayne Goss, I believe everything he says because anything he's ever told me works. I love watching him and if you are not familiar with Wayne Goss, you need to go watch him because he's great. It's Wayne, G-O-S-S -S is the way his, his name is, is spelled if you're not familiar with him. He does two or three minute videos. He's really quick, he's really concise. Um, he's amazing, he's just an amazing makeup artist. But he is so knowledgeable about so many different things. He's very upfront and straight about things and I really appreciate that about us, you know, a, a YouTube um, influencer. So yeah, there's that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go in and I'm going to curl my lashes. I'm gonna curl them now and then I'll curl them when I'm done and they have completely dried. And that way I just get maximum curl. I mean, that's just, you know, I have just found that that works for me. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna be using my Clinique again, the Lash Doubling Mascara. I'm gonna use that on my top and bottom lashes. So I'm just gonna go in with that and you'll see a huge difference right away. I'm not one to wear falsies unless it's a super special occasion, like if I were going to like a very serious event or, you know, New Year's out on the town. I mean, you know, something like that where um, it's important for those lashes to really pop and be glamorous kind of thing. And let's face it, you know, I live in Alabama. There's not a whole lot of opportunity for that. I know a lot of people do wear their, you know, their, their, their fault season. Um, they're happy to have them, but I feel like that my lashes can stand alone without it. And so I choose not to glue all that stuff to my lash line unless I just absolutely have to. So let me get down to the bottom. Try not to make a mess, but it's very likely that I will have a mess to clean up. It just depends on how steady I can be. And the older I get, the less steady I am. <laughs> it's just a, a thing. Uh, 
Okay, so that is the difference. See how it makes my lashes just really stand out. Um, I just don't feel like I need to wear falsies every day when I can put on mascara. If you hear something, that's Izzy snoring. Yeah, she's snoring. Let me see if you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's not me pooting or grumbling or anything. That That's her snoring. She's laying right here on the floor beside me, and she's literally snoring up a storm. Oh, goodness. She's either eating or snoring, but she's always doing something while I'm trying to film. Okay. Start at the root, wiggle, and pull up. Root, wiggle, and pull up. And then once you get the lashes coated, you can start kind of moving the brush around and placing them so that they're not matted up together or anything like that. But always start by coating them with, you start at the root, you wiggle and pull up. And that gives you a wonderful coating from root to tip. And then you can start moving them around. Just like this. Now, let's see if I can do my lower lashes without a mistake. I don't think I've ever done it. I've always made at least one mistake, so we're gonna see. Okay, there's a big clump right there that I need to get rid of. And that's the first coat. Now what I'm gonna do, um, while I'm choosing my lip product, I, I'm definitely gonna be using this Rimmel uh, Tiramisu, and I'm trying to decide between these two for my look today. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Um, they're both nudes. And I think that the, these will pair well together. So that's what I'm going to choose for my um, my lips today. I'll, I need to go brush my teeth and all those kinds of things and fix my hair and all that before I do my um, lips. But let's finish up the lashes. I have a fan beside me, so it's been blowing on my lashes the whole time we've been talking. So I feel pretty safe that these are dry. I did not put a terribly thick. What you have to do, see what a huge lift that gives them. But if, I mean, you have to keep these cleaned. You can't have residue build up on there. And then you have to make sure if they're not dry, it will yank them out by the roots. So be, I mean, do this at your own risk is all I can really say. This is just a trick that I like, but not everyone feels comfortable enough to do it. And the only thing I can say is if you are gonna try it, especially, you know, every time, make sure that you are very careful and that you, when you go to pull away, that you pull away very easily, very slowly, very gently. That way, if they are stuck, you can possibly get it loose without pulling out your lashes because that would be a nightmare. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go in um, with a second layer on the curled lash for volume. And I don't put much of a second coat. I don't start at the root again. I mostly stick to the tips and just make sure that they're nice and spread out and there's no clumps and that they don't, you know, um, See, this one has a clump. And if you do get a clump, if you've got, you know, like a spilly or a lash comb or anything like that, you can always use that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and get this lash comb. And I'm going to go through and try to clean up this clump that I have here. There, just like that. Okay, so um, this is what my lashes are looking like. I think they look pretty dang good, you know, to not have all that great of a lash or a brow or anything like that. You know, there's that. Okay, what I need to do now is I need to go and I need to brush my teeth. I need to uh, put on my clothes. I need to do my hair. <laughs> I'm gonna go do that and I'll be back to let you see the final look and um, sign out. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back guys. Um, and I have just used some hair oil in my hair and just left it wavy 
Um, it kind of looks a little bushy, but it's okay. <laughs> but I've gotten dressed, I've got my jewelry on, and all of that kind of stuff. Now I'm ready to do my lips. So I, again, I'm gonna go in with the tiramisu. Tiramisu um, from Rimmel, which is their long, uh, or it says lasting finish, thousand kisses contour pencil. So I'm just gonna go in and do my lips. I like to do the, the Cupid's Bow first. And make sort of like an X. Like that right there. And then I like to come down here and do this and define it. I do overline my lips just a touch because as we get older, of course, our lips thin. So um, I like to overline them just a touch, not too much. I don't want it to be overly noticeable, but that's what I do. So now what I do is I just connect the three areas. The side here and here. Is he sneezing? She's gotten into something. And then, of course, here and here on the bottom. And then I do like to fill in a little bit. That way, if my lip color fades, if I eat something greasy or whatever, at least I have this base underneath so it's not quite as noticeable. I don't want butthole lips. <laughs> okay, I've done that. Now this color that I'm gonna be using is Lolita. This is the original Lolita from the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks. It's one of my favorite colors of all time from her. I really love it. Um, I like the way that they wear. I like the long applicator. Um, it's very easy to deal with. I just enjoy it. With a lip liner on, it's just much easier to do. And there we have it. That's the end of my look. Now, I could go in. I have this Jouer lip topper. This one is in uh, Saint Tropez. Um, I could go in with that if I wanted a little bit more shimmer, but I'm happy with the way that I look. Uh, um, I feel like that I'm nice and glowy. The inner corner highlight in my eyes and the highlighter on my face. Um, it brings out just a natural look. So... Just make sure I don't have anything. And once it dries, it's, it's going to stay. I mean, you've got to take it off. <laughs> but anyway, this is the final look, guys. This is the way that I'm going. I just have on a V-neck um, sweater, and um, I'm going to wear um, jeans and boots, and that's my look. Yeah, I hope that you really enjoyed sitting down with me and watching me do my makeup. And if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. And um, yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button so that you won't lose me out in YouTube land. There's so many of us out there. And um, I do planning, lifestyle, beauty. I do lots of different kinds of things. And I also have a second channel that's a vlog where I, you know, talk about more personal things and that sort of thing. Serious topics and my life and that sort of stuff. So if you're interested, the link will be down in um, the info bar if you're interested. So yeah, that's going to be it. I hope that you all have a wonderful week. It's Sunday here, so it's the first day of the week. I hope that you really have a wonderful week and that everything goes well for you. I will talk to you later. Bye.